Fire team ban. <laughs> Navis turn to ban. Dire team ban. Navis turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Vengeful spirit. Hi everybody, welcome back Navi, as I hit five wrong buttons on my board. Greetings! Welcome back to Dota Pit Season 4 by G2A. Let's go directly into the game. Hi, Mop Packs. Hello. You're hitting bad buttons over there, are you? Well, actually, I hit the right buttons. The board just didn't update. I'm not looking at this going, wait, no levels on the soundboard. Why have we got no levels on the soundboard? This doesn't make any sense at all. So, yeah. Ten seconds. But I've, I've, right. I've now corrected said error after looking at it going, why is this not working Five right? And, remember. uh,. We're into the game. We're into game number two. Now we have to try and correct their own Reserve error. Time. Hey, they just lost a game. They cannot be infallible. According to people. Navi's turn to well, pick. Well, they're going to start it off. A pretty solid opener, at least for themselves. It'll be the Bat Rider. And, uh, of course, General playing very well in that game. And without the Chen, uh, no surprise, they'll go right into the Enchantress. And at least they have the Ventral Spirit as the counter for the Bat, right? Uh, the swaps were very well uh, executed last game. Yeah. They're... It's funny to say that when the VS took so long to reach her level 2 ultimate. Yeah. It, it took a long time. It took three pushes from Na'Vi on that top lane for the VS to get enough levels. Witch she wasn't getting it out of the jungle. I managed to get the VS and Dyer the Witch Doctor team. again. I, I don't blame London Conspiracy. These two here is uh, fantastic, but it's very rare we get both the supports picked up in the first two. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it kind of goes to show, show just how potent they are, right? Because uh, both of them are really good counters to the remain. Faceless Void for one thing. Now, at this point, um, like generally you'll see them done Five during the draft remain. for um, kind of control I should say, <laughs> versus uh, the Faceless Void. You'll see it done like trying to prevent Navi's that sort of pick coming out. In this case, bad. though, it's obviously up against the Chen Creep slash Enchantress Creep. So it'll be this time with that Bouncing Cask. Uh, the uh, the swap's so good up against the Bat Rider. There's really no downside to picking these two supports. So. Damn. Um, Navi, again, they're going to go with this ban up against the Gyrocopter. It is the hero that they love to go to the most for London Conspiracy. Um, after that, it's pretty much just Navi's been like they've run a couple Beastmaster bat. strategies as well. So I don't know if we're going to see something a little bit different come out. Or with the Witch Doctor and the Ventral Spirit, if they don't ban out the Faceless Void here, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Like, it was a rough early game for Kefka, but he played well in the later stages. Goodbye, baby knight. Navi's turn to pick. No OD for you this game. Yeah, he had, uh, <laughs> he had a very rough start to dual lane into the mid before uh, Viva did eventually show up to give him a hand. But uh, it's it won't be available to sync up with the Chronosphere, and that might be something that might dissuade them from actually going back into that. It was one of the bigger combinations that they did have up and available, and finding a good ranged hero to dual di to do the damage during the Chrono is pretty difficult once you've already lost your Death Prophet, your Gyrocopter, and your OD. So I don't know if I would want to commit my whole lineup to that at this point. Reserve time. So, uh, Navi though, without that Death Prophet, like, and without that Nature's Prophet, a lot of those recent things they've been going for, these timings that had been working out for so long are gone, and instead, we get the classic. That feels good. That's it's, nice to it's see. It's the Dendi Invoker. Welcome back. Um, sorry, I was, I was looking over, because I was checking to see what we're being had, and, yeah. <laughs> Just some issues, some I, slight issues. 
I already thought, <laughs> like I told you before we started tonight, man, that I, I'm I'm already feeling very rough this evening. Five so I, I did not recover well from my America trip. Uh, Reserve in fact, I screwed myself up even more. <laughs> but yeah. Did you like get shot or something? I no, heard it's I heard no. it's pretty dangerous over there. No, I um. <laughs> Because you're from Canada. Where, like, exactly. Where, like, everything is just like raining donuts and people, and people on mounts and... on horses or something. Moose. No horses. Come on. That's only the police. The police get the horses. Yeah, that's what I think. Like, it's, it's the Mounties, right? It's the Mounties. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yep. That's, that's basically all I know of Canada and the fact that you have like uh, an illegal drug as your, as your symbol on your flag. I... <laughs> Solid effort. 10 out of 10. Good stuff. That's, that's it, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you, pass it off, maple you, leaf? Pass, you pass it off as a maple leaf, but it's not really a maple leaf. Yeah, definitely not to those folks over on the West Coast. They, they, they're all about that stuff. I'll tell you that much. I do drugs, kids. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one thing that London Spirits like, definitely you shouldn't do at this point. I do not think you should go for the faceless point. Uh, I'm against the Invoker. Uh, without the Visual Spirit, it's probably the best counter. The second best, I guess, would be the Oracle. One would consider you can, like, False Promise, or even the Dazzle as well, again, for Seneca would be nice. And they're going to grab himself the Nyx Assassin. So it's a classic counter to the Bat Rider. You can use that Carapace inside the, the uh, Firefly. And now, jeez, General's going to have two heroes up against him the whole game. No, I'm actually just happy to have the Nyx Assassin up against someone like, a, like an Enchantress. Because that was one of those things where, like, you always ask yourself the question, how do you attack the Enchantress? Untouchable normally stops you, so you need to have magical damage coming out of somewhere. I, I've seen Tinkers Ten try and do this. Remaining. Like, it's just basically being rearmed Dagon, rearmed Dagon, rearmed Dagon, Five as well as the laser thrown in there for good measure. That's the way you kill off the Enchantress. The Nyx Assassin Reserve gets off to a good start, and you can get that Dagon with the Vendetta attack to start with, and then the follow up Dagon and the Mana Burn. You've got ways how to deal with the Enchantress, and not just the Batrider. Even the Invoker can, like, Nyx is good against all three heroes. Yeah, no, it's a very solid counter pick here. It's kind of uh, akin to, like, the Darkseer, same idea as the Invoker, where you're trying to break up his combos, trying to get that Carapace somewhere where it's going to mess him up in his nice little flow of spell after spell after spell. And, and the Enchantress as well, as you said, not only with the nuke damage, but the Carapace plays a pretty interesting role with her because you there's, like, no way you can't, off the damage if you have it uh, off cooldown like it's never going to be a miss hit or something Dying like that team. it's this massive glowing projectile and it's the only way that she even does damage so uh, you might even with how squishy she is and how much damage she does throw that out you see it sometimes with like a blade mail as well towards the enchantress so she can gut herself down pretty quick you're much anymore yeah he's like uh, I don't know, Earth Spirit 0.8, I guess. Like, it's like Earth Spirit just seems to be better Ten in every way, so remain. once he's banned out, you kind of fall back into the tusk. Five seconds Pretty much what remain. it comes down to. This Good saves. It now means that, yeah, okay, so you get, you get a, a Tusker time. support with an Enchantress support. So we assume Snake or Tusker, <laughs> Enchantress to be taken up by, uh, by Art Style, then the Invoker, back. Bat Rider already for General. So we're missing a Diddy Ra hero. On a conspiracy, like, their lanes are fairly obvious now, so it's the Zeus mid for Baby Knight, uh, the Nyx off, Witch Doctor VS, question mark where they end up, um... Ten seconds remaining. And then, potential safe laner. I would say Five potential safe laner, because, like, I'm wondering if one the conspiracy even want to battle against the Bat Rider, like what happened Reserve previously, time. like, they... They found the kills anyway, so like I, I wouldn't be against on the conspiracy just starting with the wish talk to the VS on the top and then rotating one to help out the Zeus. To help shut down Dendi. Well, I was wondering if London Conspiracy at all are Spectre pickers. It doesn't look like they have recently, but this whole combination of Zeus Spectre as well as with the roaming Nyx Assassin could be something that they might look towards in terms of uh, having to deal with it. But the only problem is you're up against a Tusk, an Enchantress, and a Bat Rider, uh, all of which can apply some pretty decent early pressure. And uh, if you're looking at Sunstrike Dirty. into like a Lasso, if he ends up going for the Quasic Zord to help with the push, considering it's been their recent style lately, I, I would be very concerned about something like that. And, and they could just honestly go back right to the Juggernaut again. You see that the Lycan's banned out, but with the... Uh, Voodoo Restoration as Ten well as a possible heal ward. Remaining. There's no reason why London Conspiracy can't be a little bit more active in a game that they'd have a little Five bit more sustained with them. Remaining. Yeah, normally normally you'd be a little bit apprehensive about saying Juggernaut versus an Enchantress because the uh, the army soaks Reserve up so much, time. but 
He did very well against the Enchantress Army in the previous game, and you saw how the Batrider could function there. Navi's they actually respected themselves. Uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm leaning with you for the Juggernaut. At the same time, Navi could also do the same kind of thing. Having the Juggernaut in their lineup would be a brilliant pickup. Uh, great against every single hero of London Conspiracies, because none of them really have an escape mechanism against it. Yeah, other than that, um, the only one I'd be looking for would maybe be a Sven. Possibly something that they've been liking a lot lately for Ditura. Uh, you can kind of do nice little setups too with the Sunstrike. It's a very long stun with the Stormhammer. So um, I think either of those, I, yeah, I agree. Like, if you go for a Juggernaut here for Navi, like, what do London Conspiracy even answer back with? Then they have to go for something like the Sven. There's just not that many core heroes left, honestly, unless they're going to run like an Annie Mage or something. You, you, need, you need huge physical damage. Oh, come on, not an Annie Mage. That's like, yeah. Um, I prefer to see a Phantom Assassin than, than an Andy Mage. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. See what they want to roll the way to it. Oh, they'll grab this Slayer. All right, he's been having a pretty good time lately as well. This actually makes it a little bit more difficult for a lot of conspiracy to get the Jaga. Like, he's still great up against everyone apart from the Slark. Because he doesn't have the lockdown control, so if he does start the Omni Slash, Slark just goes into Shadow Dance. Yeah, exactly. It's like one of the, the better counters. And then trying to deal with that and the creeps at the same time, that's where things get really difficult. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. I'm interested to see, too, like what you feel comfortable on, like going up Five against a hero like a Slark. Uh, you definitely want to have some lockdown control. I'm actually thinking more about that Animage Reserve being a really time. good pickup here. Because that's, that's the one way you can kill off the Slark. You're able to mana burn him out nice and early on. You got a Nyx Assassin to help you with that. So you wouldn't always require something like an Abyssal Blade Lockdown to kill off the slot. You got a lot of stuns up your sleeve as well. Like... Sven stands great. It looks like. Yeah. Uh, okay, they'll grab a Sven. Disgustingly Sven. Yeah. That's uh, actually going to be their first Sven of this patch, too. So something, obviously, it's been coming up for a lot of teams lately. Uh, it's. It's okay here. Uh, it allows a little bit of AoE control, maybe to help out your Witch Doctor ever so slightly, but it does just feel... It feels more generic than it actually feels with synergy with their lineup, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really... You don't see this whole, like, Spectre Zeus or Faceless Void Witch Doctor synergy that we've been seeing. It's more like we need a popular meta core that can hit people with physical damage. I, know, I, I still... It's that knee-jerk reaction again. Like, it's... it's... The effect of no Tide Hunter from four years ago. <laughs> Ten seconds. Well, I think well, that world of let's stack, let's stack, and Dom of the Dominus event. Wonderful. What's he going to do? Oh, wonderful. Points up and cleave as your priority ability. Yup. Okay. We've gone full circle in matter. And, and that's risky, right? Because you're up against Navi, who we've already known to put a lot of pressure in terms of vision. And if you're going to be trying to get this little stack up and going up against an Enchantress, a Tusk, uh, even the Invoker, a Slark too, like there are plenty of heroes. And of course, the Batrider, it's like his prime territory is fighting in this Roshan pit and Ancients area. So uh, if they actually plan on going for this whole strategy of stacking up, which one must assume they will with the Sven, uh, they're going to have to keep a lot of high priority in terms of the vision up on that high ground. And you're going to need your allies there with you. Like, probably Kev is going to be, like, hanging out there with the Carapace and the Impale ready to protect Jellyfee. <laughs> He's going to be going for these stacks. Do stack, then. Because... I... About right, isn't it? I... So, you know, you could get away with stacking up that close camp on the top lane. If you do that, then the Batrider's going to steal it. Uh, or at least leech out the experience when you take it. I feel like it's a waste of picking the hero if you're not going to stack the Ancients, so I'm sure they will, and they'll go for it, but... but it's, just it's... The, it's just the timing when you do stack up the Ancients. Like, you still need to get the Helm of the Dom before you really mm -hmm. start to stack up the Ancients, because by that point, you should have your four points up in Cleave. So stacking up the Ancients would be you. And without the lifesteal and the extra, like, armor and base regen, uh, you can't take the Ancients anyway. You don't have another hero on LC that's going to tank up the Ancients for you. Your offlaner is not that type of hero. It's... Yeah, it's uh, it's not exactly. It, Nick Saxon is an interesting offlaner in that sense that he doesn't. He's not like your Bat Rider with the lasso and the pullback, and he's not your Faceless Boy with a massive AOE. He has to do kind of a, a lot of separate things, and until he has a Blink Dagger online, he feels a lot more like a support than he does an offlaner in a lot of senses because he can't set up this massive ravage or big controlling factor that you expect out of your offlane player. 
I'm uh... The more I look at this, the more I'm favoring Navi's lineup. Yeah, there's a lot of things that make me worry about LCs. I agree. Yeah. The timing, like, that's why I'm, like... That's why I was leaning away from this Venom as the final pick, while I understand why they do it. Um, I feel he's going to come online a little bit too late. You're, you're still looking at, like, if, if we do look at the timing, so you think about it, you're going to get Helm with the Dominator, uh... You're probably going to be having to build into drums so you get some kind of early stat item because you're going to get pressured early on. Uh, that's with your treads. And you normally then have to take a team fight before you get enough money to get your blink deck. And you're doing this against a lineup which is going to push you and be massively aggressive. Like it's a Tuscar and a Slark. And, and a, and a like you're, you're not going to get an opening uh, just to sit in your own jungle and farm. It's not going to happen. And Dendi. Does go for a Quas Wex build. He should be able to like win out against the lane against the Zeus. If he doesn't win it immediately, he's going to win it later on. And looks like he's actually going to go Exor. So you're looking at more damage. Yeah, I... this is uh, slightly worrisome. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> it's, 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 I that, it's that moment when you just start thinking of timings more than anything else. And you've seen the priority of the teams now. So one observer war being planted down by Navi. They they like, both players TP to the mid tier one tower. Uh, so LC try and see deeper into the Navi jungle. This one's meant to see the enchantress rotations, and this one's meant to see the stacking more than anything else. We'll see what sort of positioning they're doing down here. Like Solon's moving down here along with Baby Knight and Diva. It looks like they want to put at least a little bit of contests down here would make sense and baby knight he's like he's gonna end up in mid like you look at his build he's got four clarities and two oh two, yeah no for sure tangos. this is most definitely a let's spend the living crap out of this we get high levels up in our lightning uh get a bottle and just like spray until the invoker can't do anything else it's also not a cross works invoker makes his life easy easier to do such a thing yeah, it's just interesting that Baby Knight's like down at the bottom rune. I hopefully he'll make it up top here in time. And yeah, they'll rotate down a couple more. I'm not sure what exactly they were looking at. Maybe they were thinking there was gonna be a lot of pressure the on the top rune. And General, he's gonna go in for it. Yeah, nice and tail. Easy gaming. It's not really the first uh, ability that you want to get on the next assassin. Like you get impel over spike carapace or mana burn. When General is running the off lane, because this is the fact that Nyx Assassin also just showed himself on that top rune, reveals the fact that he is now running a top lane solo. So Navi have the one on one, the Nyx Assassin versus the Batrider. And there's Baby Knight, who's already actually, <laughs> he, he is taunting Dendi with a little bit of a Mario jump. Uh, but it's the Zeus versus the Invoker, and that leaves the off lane Sven, VS, and Witch Doctor. A very aggressive lane. A large amount of stuns that Slark doesn't really have a way to get away from. Like he's, he's got his pounce, but he doesn't have his level 2, so there's no dark pack to just shrug off the stuns. Yeah, they, they had to do this play. Like, all of this early game is going to be on Solon, as well as Viva. Uh, just like it was the last game. Like, they did an extremely good job against General. They had great rotations in the mid lane, bringing that dual lane in with the Witch Doctor. And now, they need to pressure Ditya as much as they can before level 6. Because before then, Slark, honestly, is like just useless in a lot of senses up against a tri lane completely useless he can't do a thing he won't be able to last it he doesn't have any sort of like a pa dagger or something like that you know there's no way he's going to get cs unless he gets this pull under the tower and until he gets the regen of shadow dance this is going to hurt him a lot our style's already rotating they're going to try and uh, have some kind of influence on this bottom bottom aggressive tri lane of lc <laughs> as you said like, like this this lock is nothing like he's hit, he's hit level two at least and doesn't even go for the Dark Pact, he's going for the Essence Shift as well as the Pounce. If you want to spell a Death Killer, that's basically it. They need to get the Troll Trap over on the Witch Doctor. Paralyzing Cask could buy a lot of space, but the Storm Bolt, now the Paralyzing Cask follow up. The Pounce is forward, there's no Dark Pact. In fact, now the VS has to stun up our style, but the damage is already done. The Slark will spill first blood. They keep shifting out the Essence with the Shard Block. You've got Warcry available now from Jalopy. Back out, Magic Missiles off cooldown in two seconds time. But they're just not in position for this. First blood from Navi, a good rotation from the Enchantress, and they do manage to capitalize. Yeah, and this is the other kind of 
uh, issue with this whole aggressive trend. Like, yeah, it's uh, obviously you need to pressure the Stark and everything, but you can't be down here without vision in terms of art style. I, you know exactly what's going to happen. You understand the role of the Enchantress in this position. If you can't keep the wave here the entire time, then art style is going to come in for free kills. And as long as someone's holding the enemy down, yeah, Stark can, you know, just steal a bunch of stacks. He'll get his pounces out. Once he get a couple levels in the dark pack, then he's definitely able to get some kills. But but you committed your two observer wars to other positions to stop the the, yeah. uh, the pull stack on the top lane, but also to watch the rotation around the mid lane. Yeah, that's interesting that they went for that vision. Now it's going to work out here. Uh, and it will help uh, to help secure the life of Baby Knight in this situation. So at least they can be thankful of that. But uh, I guess they'll kind of sack their tri lane in a sense um, just to save Baby Knight. And he actually is just going hit some jungle creeps. He's a long way away, but he he can expend his mana. And he's got a fresh bottle flying out to him. There's no rune to grab as well. And now, in fact, uh, our style's going to move down south. LC was a long way down. Here comes your snowball. Witch Doctor, this time around he's keeping his distance, and he can follow with that paralyzing task. It's slowing him down, but ah, VS. Once he got pounced like that and leashed, there was just no way for him to escape. So another kill goes the way of the Slark. Two for zero now on this guy. Well, it's not often that you see uh, the safe lane in terms of the Radiant blocking off this camp. But that's exactly what they had to do, because as long as the wave's not here, and they can't hold any sort of control over it from the dire side, it's going to allow these free rotations in every single time from the Enchantress, and it makes Slark look like a capable hero before level 6. <laughs> and so, Dicharel's getting all this free fire. He's now second on the net worth, only behind Dendi, who's had himself a completely free lane, because Baby Knight, um, on the Zeus, typically a hero one would suspect that can generally always get CS just by using the Chain Lightning, the in uh, well, the Arc Lightning as well as the Static Field, but with those threatening rotations of the Enchantress, and who now has a smoke as well, knowing, like Artstyle knows, that obviously there was a ward mid, judging by Baby Knight's movements. So he'll make his way there, uh, all smoked up as well, and try and secure another lane. So for me, LC's got one big opening, which will come before the Batrider, and then again, ah, uh, okay. That opening is now out the window. It was the Nyx Assassin. And the Nyx was looking pretty good on levels as well as Matter until this point. Uh, and I was waiting for him to hit level 6. TP down the bottom lane, and then initiate in on the Slark. Just before he hits level 6, there was going to be that perfect window of opportunity. And that window, just because of General's aggressiveness he just had, uh, that window is being closed up. Yeah, that's a good point, because now he just <laughs> he can't make that rotation at all. Uh, you don't want to sacrifice going back home or something to try and make that sort of a play. It'll be way too easily telegraphed by General. Can't just sneak over and grab himself a TP and Missing out on that early rotation of this hero that you're giving so much of your farm priority to is... It's a pretty massive impact on the early game, especially up against that Slark who, for one point in the game, will finally be able to be killed by a Nixon plus one. Later on, it just won't be possible. Baby Knight's all the way back home as well. He's having a very rough time in the mid lane. The CS is still pretty good considering yeah, how much he's been zoned out. Oh, Arsenal's going. gonna slow somebody down, he's looking for an opening, and it's gonna be Viva. They focus over on that Wish Doctor, one support after another. The Sunstrike from Denny is actually what gets the kill. And with the shards block up, you can go for more damage. Clark will take one, Denny takes the other. He doesn't even have to leave the mid lane to get the kill. It's now 4-0 in favor of Na'Vi. I have to say, I... have thought that the, the storm hammers as well as the cast have actually been almost perfectly placed every time by LC. Like every time he seems to get the maximum value out of both. Stunning up uh, everything and just trying to control it, make sure you're not going to die. But each time it's just the position that they're in. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> like, being that far out against the Tantris is just certain death in general. Finally looks like he might go down here with that cast. Stormbolt, everything committed. He is dead. There's finally that rotation. It, it, it didn't come from, uh, from Kefka. I'm gonna go back and heal up, and uh, then go out, because he's got Vendetta. He's a level 7, level 7 Nyx Assassin with Vendetta. The Lopi can have his safe lane farm. The aggro tri lane did not work, and when that fails, obviously, you just have to cut your losses and try and catch up on farm. That's what it is, getting kills. Yeah, now General can just come back top if you'd like, though, which I assume he probably will. It's not even gonna TP, he's gonna hold it because he wants his own rotation early on. I remember what happened in game number 1 with General. Like, it was an offlane against the same two supports of LC. And now you add an extra stun to the mix with his Ven. It's a dangerous thing for him. 
He does have about three levels up now at this point, at least. And uh, excellent, a uh, little bit of that Sentry Warden Observer combo down here, spawning out all this rotation here from Kepka. He knows, though, because the uh, creep just followed him for a moment. So yeah. have a good idea where that Sentry is. Then did he rob pounced away? Yes, that as well. <laughs> but at least I'll know exactly like where it is, too. Well, he's back on the knee. Yuraz gonna pounce again. Nope. Garashi ends up just attacking into the range creep. Farm instead. Vendetta was gonna wear her off. And again, did Yuraz now. He'll just hold on to Shadow Dance. And it looks like he still doesn't want to yeah, risk it too much. No. Looks like he's about to turn around a fight. Now there's 10 one charges available for Jalopy. And General has expended pretty much. Uh, he can't get back out with that Firefly. He has to TP himself if he's going to survive here. And that's exactly what he does. Hits the ground. Stormbolt animation was started, but it could not complete. Kafka again, making his way through here, keeping a general eye on this, and Richard dropping low, but he's okay. He's just heading his way home. Uh, it's so easy as well for him to realize that he's being watched. Yeah. The second his ult, he just disappears. Like, okay, guys, like either they got to observe a ward here, or the next assassin is in Vendetta right next to me. Early warning system. Yeah, during the laning, like when you're actually around your oh, art style top lane, perfect wraparound. Just another free kill on Jellope. And that sounds better combo. Uh, oh, I, no way. They don't swap yet, though. One shot just will give him a little bit of space for the last attack from our style. Yeah, it's gonna reach. <laughs> That's also gonna be our style if he stays here. Yep, level six is now available. So you got Impetus on the field for this Enchantress. Start racking up even more damage. And uh, again, it's this big early lead here for Navi. They've drafted for it, and they are executing. But now you're going to be looking for a big snowball as Digi Ra. He could go for the blink. He could go for the uh, shadow blade. I think I would like to see that as well. But first, oh no, that's actually for Dendi. Okay, so Dendi's grabbing himself up his Midas, and they can hit a nice little timing there in between the Midas and uh, like plus one item there for Dendi, as well as whatever big item they want to bring out for Digi Ra. Jellope, God strength top lane, right on top of General, cast flying through. Gonna match missile as well, and oh, well, that's a, a little bit of deja vu, but he's been having a much better game so far. I don't think he was just waiting for it, really. I've been waiting for the last 30 seconds, that's why I started checking out the other lanes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, then they, and uh. then they made the move. General coming up a little bit too far. Navi's making a move down bottom as well. They've got a the smoke up popped on Arsal and Denny. Is this the sneak? Oh, it's the early sneak. Oh. I saw reveals, reveals himself. If he actually stopped sentry warding then, if he, yeah, did, if he didn't throw, throw down the sentry, uh, they potentially could have killed off the rotating Nyx Assassin. I also find it interesting that Arsal, the man with three points up in with Untouchable, uh, isn't the one moving to the front lines. He doesn't have a heal available. And now with the wave of terror, oh, Na'Vi caught with their pants down to follow up some of the sun. The burst damage was just so quick, even with that spike Carapace are returning a lot of the damage and the paralyzing cast. They just can't get the space. Finally, did it raw. is gonna get himself some revenge for shards off target. Snowball will still bounce through three players of LC. It's a two for one trade-off. And the rest of Navi are scampering themselves away. Roshan's at half-life. Don't have the damage to kill him off. Even with God's strength now coming back off cooldown again. Just don't have the tankiness yet to survive that. So yeah, there were a lot of... It is worth it. Maybe you could do it. Like, you do have the Morbid Mask on this, Ven. Is it possible for Elsie to finish Roshan? Uh, with God Strength, likely. Um, with General being dead... It, it wouldn't be easy. They don't have much mana left here on the Witch Dogs in terms of Voodoo Restoration. They have the Minus Armor. Actually, it is maxed as much as she can right now at level 3, so... Half strength or half HP? Yeah, you probably could do it with God Strength. It is definitely risky, though. Uh, up against, yeah, maybe maybe 18 seconds is long enough. I don't know. It's a tough call. Baby Knight's gonna make the call right here. It looks like there it is. And yeah, ah! <laughs> he's not sure about this. He's like, all right, I'll do it. The decision. That's well worth it because you knew Nabi had had this interest to take him out anyway. There were so many complicated issues during that fight. In terms of how that went down with that sentry, like, Arsa placed it, and it's really hard to tell as to where he placed it, because of this Observer Ward, it might have been in range, since it was definitely in range of the sentry. I think the Observer Ward could see this as well, although it's kind of hard to tell, just by the way the fog, of course, does work, so... It, it looks like they would have known that the sentry immediately got planted, so they would have known he went in whether or not Arsa destroyed that ward. So, um, 
just just good paying attention there from the map as well from LC. Obviously coming right in. The moment you see the Enchantress walking and you're like, okay, we're just gonna all rotate. So I'm not sure why Navi's still committed. Um, it seemed like it was fairly obvious that they had given it given it away. Dyer's bottom tower. Seemed a little odd. Attack. They went for it and they paid the price. They still, however, do have the two highest net worths on the field. That advantage which they had is the 3,000 net worth advantage is just disappearing quickly. Yeah, and part of that big lead too is the Midas on top of Danny, which obviously is great on Evoker. You need those levels, you want that gold as well, the Snowball and some of those other massive Agnum Scepters and all kinds of fun items on the hero, but uh, currently not going to be offering a lot. And the only benefit right for now is that Tichara didn't go for one. Uh, I'm not sure if he will. We've seen some pretty late Slark Minuses, even after Treads, just trying to keep the hero up because attack speed is always going to be nice with your Essence uh, Shift, so we'll see what he wants to do. Right now, he knows he's being watched. No creep able to see him, so... Okay, Kefka won a much. Yeah, so do you want to assume there's a ward there? Kefka's looking for an easier target. I guess it, you'll see Denning over the side for a moment, but... Moves over to the Slark, Mana Burn, Baby Knight's arrived. Now, he's actually got his full ulti combo as well. But, uh, when the Shadow Dance being triggered nice and early. He rides just backs himself away to safety. <laughs> just like fighting over this stack down here, just duking it. It's just so hard to do with that. Minus. He won. I wonder if Jellope, he's got the helm now. I'll be interested to see how they want to play this. Like some, it's a lot of variants. Most people will go right for the Sanj, then go back for a blink and then grab the Yasha. Some people grab just the SNY. Some people go right into the blink. In terms of the way their lineup's currently operating and how he can initiate these fights, I would be okay with the blink, even though he's not going to have a lot of damage. You have your Death Ward, you have your Nyx Assassin. Just rely on maybe your early spell damage instead, rather than the spend. Especially up against the Enchantress, you don't do anything anyway. <laughs> Just hope you can get some nice cleaves going, I suppose. Have to have enough with Zeus Salt kill here? Uh, it's... Eh, with two points in the mana burn. No, it's pretty tanky, Batrider. He's, he's, just, dude, he's got 46 he's strength. Attack. He should be okay. He's almost got his blink dagger as well. Might have been a little bit more possible. Oh, if he gets one TP though. That's just done. No one, no one. Low. Here comes that so TP. late. It's... Uh, originally, I thought it was Baby Knight. Like, Kefka was waiting for Baby Knight to TP, but his TP was on cooldown. That's why he didn't instantly come. I thought it was going to be Solon, because he had the swap up and ready, and they could have just brought him into the tower. But instead, they, they've got more of a focus, and this is what we talked about. Like, they need a thing to stack down, they need lots of people there, so I can understand the hesitation of TPing. Now they now they TP'd the extra help. Wish Doctor arriving to give the extra heals. Dyer's structures are fortified. All right, well, mission accomplished. He's really close to that Blink Dagger as well. We'll see what he wants to go for. Ooh. They see Dendi, he's such a juicy target right now, but with Tichira kind of standing there as the vanguard. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. I thought LC were going to screw up that last hit. Catapult was, st was still connecting. VS was on the mark, art style. In lane. <laughs> Get the stun, gets the mana style, the follow up stun, and now they can finally swing him down. That was actually, to get <laughs> That was the greatest decision ever to actually switch into the stun as opposed to the Vendetta attack. Yeah. There's no way, if he starts going for the juke to the side with the speed that you get on Enchantress, there's like no way you're going to be able to hit that properly. It would be a complete utter fluke if you do. So I, I definitely appreciate that decision. And Baby Knight, yeah, he was sitting up here waiting for that tick over and he is going to grab himself up the blink on the Zeus. So understandable up against the Slark, Batrider, and even the Invoker. He just needs to be in the proper positioning all the time. And if that means hanging on back until the fight's like a quarter of the way over, blinking in and then doing everything, I think that's okay. Get that over something like an ether lens. That, yeah. You know, obviously, the blink tag is going to give you a lot more maneuverability. But an ether lens on Zeus is like your bread and butter. Yeah, I'm sure he'll move into that next. I hope. <laughs> it just seems to be one of the heroes that it does synergize is even uh, the best with uh, amongst everyone. And... I'm actually thinking now with uh, the he might even want to hold on to the arcane boots and go into something like a Yule scepter. Uh, really difficult against the Bat Rider. For the, I mean, for the Bat Rider to work with, as well as uh, Tusker. Radiance Once the snowball in, you'll set yourself away to safety. 
Gen General and Seneca were just doing something very sneaky over here. They, they were smoked up sitting right here, hoping that one of those supports was going to come and do the stack, or someone was going to come do the stack, because they waited right until that uh, minute mark before they finally started advancing. They're like, all right, no one's coming, because they couldn't find a creep around, so I think they were hoping that someone else was going to show up to do it. Tower is under see, they're up on the top lane. Pushing into the tier one tower, you got an Invis Kefka. Moving with the blink four, gets the double stun and the double mana burn. Oh. And now Jalopi, no, the snowball ends up protecting. They still need more damage. While meanwhile, up on the top lane, the battle's going up here with Zolan. The swap out, and then the TP general's gonna stop him from escaping. But it's down the bottom lane where they've wanted Dendi and gonna catch him. All it takes to kill you? That was close. They didn't have any detection, but they got it with the last thunderbolt. So Dendi not able to sneak himself away. There's still a two for one trade off, and uh, it will be a tier one tower for both sides. Maybe nice jumping forward to try and creep skip it out. Yeah, and Ditcherod did go for that Midas, but he's already up to 2k gold, so he's, been, he's feeling okay about this. Even though it is about 17 minutes in, you feel like uh, you don't offer all that much, but being able to just farm around the map, he's been doing a pretty good job, and now he can move into uh, either that Shadow, probably the Shadow Blade if he, he wants some damage. Our push speed from Na'Vi is so slow. He's actually giving time for Elsie to rotate towards the mid, and one kill off Seneco, he doesn't have Snowball. Uh, but LC can do considerable damage to this mid tower. And yeah, their lineup's looking really great. And Jumpy's been hitting those. That Stormhammer was so nice on top of uh, Dendi as well as the Tusk. Uh, I thought he was going to be able to. T or, well, it only hit Dendi. I thought he'd be able to clip the Tusk Radiant's as well. Then it would have been an easy double kill. But the chase down still secured it. And uh, again, just like Jelvi played such a good game on that Juggernaut. And with that Blink Dagger, now he's playing Hard Carry and Initiator right now for their team. He's pretty much the, the forefront. Be easier once he's got that BKB done. That considerable damage I was talking about to the tower just above the Nye range. The best time to pull back, they Thunder God's Wrath is uh, to reveal the Bat Rider on the top. With the Death Ward, they're gonna have more than enough damage Dyer's to kill off General. Is under attack. <laughs> Kepka was up there with almost no mana <laughs> entire duration. I think that's why they needed the uh, Thunder God's Wrath, just to help finish him off. And... At least the Shadow Blade will now be out here. So with the Shadow Blade, you can already see. Obviously, uh, Slark is going to provide one thing for your team. It's going to be the vision gate. Uh, it's something that we've talked about Navi in terms of how much they seem to put a lot of priority into it. And with the Bat Rider once more, uh, Ditcherov should be able to help snipe out a lot of these wards as LC are starting to be uh, more aggressive and more powerful. As you know, they're starting to come online. They're bringing down that network towards them. If they can actually get some aggressive wards in here, Ditcherov is going to be sniping them out and bringing them down. So it makes it a lot harder for them to actually snowball any sort of a lead that they get from like one team fight into those objectives without the actual vision around you to support it. Because um, one bad jump from Jellybee is just so bad. Initiating with your hard carry, if they lose him right away, like if he blinks in and gets lassoed or something, there's no way you win that fight. General, Radiance say goodbye to yourself. Start with the mana burn. Just wanted to make sure he can't blink himself away. You've still got that son of Marble. It's gonna connect, baby knight. Let's the ulti go, but Dendi with a great deafening blast with the meteorite. LC are just burning to death. Baby knight, he tries to TP out, but Tuscar shards perfectly on position. Dendi will take the double kill, and Snake is still looking for a little bit more. Well, his snowballs on cooldown, that's not gonna work, but he could potentially shard in at the Witch Doctor, and that's what he's playing for, but he can't really reach it. Slark, however, okay, yeah, they're just gonna go for this. Bounce forward with the snowball, stun the paralyzing cast into the death ward. He actually gets the damage out. He'll end up killing off the Slark in the restoration. He's surviving. The urn charge is not enough damage. The witch doctor gets a revenge kill. He's duking the sun strike. He actually doesn't get hit by the sun strike either. What a play. Now to the mid lane. Arsal, watch this slow pack. Stop this pack. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Chantress is down. Oh, that, that dive. The cask shackle. We've all seen it before where you just get a little bit too close to each other. Great death word. And uh, Denny came in just at the last moment. One of the casks, uh, it did eventually bounce over to the creeps, but it was too late for Ditcherod. And again, uh, great movement too as well by Biva. Uh, making his way to the high ground. You can see him juking the sun strike too, just ma making sure he wasn't being too predictable. He knew he was being watched by the Forge Spirits. Yeah, just following him around, slowly sneaking. Pretty much. So he gets a little unlucky because uh, Roshan hasn't spawned up just yet. He's, uh, again, this long duration, almost maximum duration spawn time. So LC don't have that quick momentum going from one to the next. 
You're actually getting a Yule Sept to build on this Nyx Assassin, unless this is a casual Sage's Mask. But I'm still wondering if Dagon is his play here. The Enchantress only has 902 life. And they need some good, quick ways to kill her off. And yeah, Zeus helps with that. But you need to put her in the grave before she can start up her sprites. And Zeus can't do that by himself. Yeah, I'm not sure um, if it is. It is a little bit unusual to go for the Yules. Like, yeah, you can set up into an Impale. It does help against the Bat Rider, but you're a Nyx Assassin, so generally you're relying on your Carapace for that. And ooh, very aggressive smoke. But their Curry is flying right over the ward. So Radiant's you go for this whole smoke play in their jungle, attack. and then you give yourself away completely by Dada's the Curry. <laughs> Just bringing in a couple attack. wards. <laughs> and now they know exactly where they are. You can see Snakeo perfectly circling them. Yeah. You got the initial ping on that courier Dyer's too. But they're making their way for him. Dyer's so even though Navi knows where they're attack. coming from, they're not in a great position. Like they get, they're in a position where Radiant's they can blow the smoke. And Slark realizes, okay, yeah, now he's going to shatter blade. He's got his gem up. Attack. Oh, he understands when he's being watched. And else he won't find their opening. Because they ran up all this way, now Navi have even more space. Then he goes back to farming up the bottom lane. Looks like he's getting closer to completing up. In fact, now has completed up that BKB of his. Yeah, it's interesting that he went into that. Um, much more common to see the SNY these days, but when you're up against the Invoker, as well as even just the general control coming out from your Tusk and um, the Firefly damage too, it's understandable to go for the BKB, just trying to make sure that he can actually, you know, there's no point having the damage and uh, everything from an SNY if you can't actually right-click. So uh, <laughs> some games you do still have to go back for that BKB. So Roshan time. Who gets to come out on top? Mako's gonna walk himself Radiant's in, just put down a nice hillside ward. Already LC are looking for the ward vision of Navi. Radiant's they'll have to check the hillside top. anyway. Like they just wave in so they'll see that Roshan is there. Maybe Knight is worth a bolt. Even though he doesn't have a lot of mana, and maybe that's another reason why he's holding back right now. Baby Knight's not really in a good position to fight this. Because he only got half of his mana. And man, Dendi is just like terrifying right now too. Like if Jelvy doesn't get on top of him, he's gonna be opening so much damage these fights BKB turned on. It's gonna be like he'll have to get basically swapped into Jelpy for them to try and bring him down because Kefka, Baby Knight, Viva, they just don't offer anything right now up against Dendi. I suppose maybe the Death Ward. Dyer's bottom tower is Again, it's these, these tense battles around the Roshan pit, and with Batrider in your hands, there's just not, like, there's no faceless void this time here for LC, so this time they're gonna have to solely rely on the Death Ward, rely on the swap, and it's gonna be a lot harder for them to fight here, all, all provided by this vision of Dichira. Like, it's unbelievable how much control they have. Out of the music, but, like, it's the perfect rune for Azus to get an illusion rune, so he can go out and scout what's going on, and then that rune then gets stolen by the Enchantress, revealing out more positions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually triggering. Uh, that had to be a misclick. All strength was just burned by Sven. I mean, it looked like he was trying to go for the kill onto the Slark. One of the ghost strength straight away, but now, okay, maybe not wait. The Tanago evaporates from the fight. Kira also being revealed out with that bolt. They're going to drag it back in again with a swamp. Two heroes down very, very quickly. They can mop up these four spirits of Indy, and Roshan now belongs to Elsie. Just one slight misstep though, and that's exactly what LC needed. They capitalized on it too. It wasn't exactly the easiest play to make to just like jump on Seneco. Pretty risky and not really having any sort of vision on the high ground, but I need just non-position. Uh, he's got Meteorite Deafening Blast with the PKB and four staff. He can get into position and then survive. But it's so risky without anyone else from his team. And general, yeah, without a blanker or something. This is, yeah, this is LC done. It's surprising how much vision Navi still have, considering they're also up against the Zeus. Uh, like Baby Knight not checking up on this high ground, considering he's already in the Roshan pit, not checking up over here by their own ward. He hasn't really been doing any sort of scouting, which is one of the bigger parts of even picking Zeus in your lineup. Um, so something that uh, I certainly would be like looking towards if I had a Zeus on my team, especially when I have this Slark who's running around deboarding everything I have. If you want to get back this vision game, like he should be checking this high ground as well. But Baby Knight not showing like any sort of initiative towards the actual deboarding. Too good. Well, he didn't have the bloodstone before. Now he does. He's got the mana for it all. Yeah, that that could be uh, a decent reason as well. Like if you're looking to a fight, you don't want to be burning all your mana as well. But oh, Danny's gonna have a very good idea, but he's all alone because of this up top. Wow, that was just puff. 
Nira added enough pressure to the Nyx Assassin, tried to dodge in a different direction, and then the Sun Strike hit perfectly. So the Nyx Assassin goes down, Nira tries to run away, he's gonna get stunned up. There was no, uh, no Dark Pact being triggered, so they just have to keep running around. And the swap back over, now goes through Shadow Dance, the Sentry Ward's been placed, but obviously they don't see that, the Death Ward. Nira's down far enough, they're using the Courier to scout him out. They almost lost that oh, Courier, but Ben blinked himself forward. Enough to finish the job. And well, top lane, that ward, uh, providing the vision, knowing that he was totally alone, and so they're gonna lose Baby Knight at the same time. It's really bugging you, isn't it? I mean, it's why you picked the hero, isn't it? I'm just saying. <laughs> Pretty big part of the hero. It is, it is uh, basically a free gem when you've got the map to keep fault. Either way, it will be that Yule Scepter though, so uh, General's life gets even harder, and it's pretty good up against the Invoker, right? Because, yeah, you can use the Carapace to mess up his combo, but you're only going to be blocking one instance of damage, and if that instance is a single tick of the Meteor or, you know, the Deafening Blast, you're still going to go down, and Yule's will help him both get the stun as well as be survivable. So, it's a very interesting pickup. It's not something you'll see too often, but I think it's really good here. Oh, Dendi, he's going to leave Arcel all alone. Well, Baby should, Knight here. This should be yeah. an easy bloody murder. Just gonna attack him once, wait for him <laughs> like to arrive style. in, and uh, there you go. Our style will die. Uh, our style should. Yeah, he will die. He'll set the cancel off the TP. Then Zeus can go for a secondary set of nukes. Alright, easy game. So now, what what can they do? Like, they've had this Aegis uh, for a while now. Uh, it's obviously been burned, right? Yeah, it is gone now. <laughs> wow. Sorry, that's just really, really bad for them. Uh, Dira's gonna die anyway. Uh, but Jalopi, uh, he walked up to the top rune, and he was just about to pick up the double damage rune, and then it, t it ticked over. Oh, I hate when that happens. That's the worst. It gave him the haste anyway, but... Oh, this is nice. He's still gonna have god strength for this push too. But this is what you need, like, uh, they haven't been able to actually get too many objectives since it felt like they were kind of on top, and, and now they're actually pushing in and, and starting to move in, so... Snag this up. Yeah, trying to have a oh, rack of this. Oh, oh, oh. uh, he's got a very aggressive blink forward. I kind of like this this Yules, because he can blink Yules, and um, as long as time isn't of the essence, it doesn't allow a guaranteed stun, whereas a lot of time it can be so hard to hit that impale. It is... I, I think it's, like, at the point where it's too long <laughs> as to when it actually comes out. It's so brutal compared to, like, Earth Spike. The, the duration is ridiculous. Uh, the air, yeah, rather the, uh, the wind-up. It can't be hero-targeted. Like, that's just... It's, just... it's a proper skill shot now for the next assassin. Man, he's he's on the prowl again. In terms of actual sentry vision, they don't have all that much. They did lose that gem, obviously, when Digiraga got picked off on the bottom. So that's been helping it on the side of LC, being able to take some good control of the vision on their own side of the map. There's still a couple remnants here for Navi, like they still have this idea, they do see where Jalpy is moving, thanks to a couple wards that are still left up and open, and again, even without the gem, you can see Dintura, like he's just saying, like, there's a ward here, there's a ward there. Like, I still know. We had to get out there and do something about it. Yeah. Mm. Baby Knight, again, he's not going back for that Aether Lens. It... Oh. He's going directly into off terrain. Either that or he's and... considering an Agadim's build, but we're going very old school on a Zeus then if he's doing that. Yeah, I would think it would be the Octarine. It is a little bit unusual, like, without the Aether Lens too, but um, Octarine as well as the Blessed One is going to mean a lot of spamming. Clap, clap. Are you here, Francis, having a reunion? <laughs> uh, not the greatest videos ever made. Another friends reunion video. The uh the Zeus friends video. Uh no. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't I don't think I know what it is. Well you you've never heard of it? No. Zeus, uh, Zeus what? Look up um instead of two old random Oh ha, ha, ha. Oh whoops. Whoopsie whoopsie. Uh, Did he just get his TP cancelled? No! Oh no. Kefka blinked him, he TP'd over to his base, blinked Dyer's forward, was right in front of the Batrider, and he double tapped his Yule Scepter. Ah, uh, yes. Instead of actually Happens. using the Batrider, so then he could follow up with the Spy Carapace to the stun into potential kill. Uh, is then what ended up happening. So, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a whoopsie day. Oh, just, just rise. 
Um, oh, mm -hmm. maybe. Now nah, right. he should be able to get out here. He's he's can slock. Like unless he gets stunned up by by this vent, he's not going to die. Pretty simple. It's pretty much that. I like that he went back for the VKB as well. It's not exactly what you generally want. Like, kind of sucks one of those heroes where you'd love to get it almost as late as possible. But there's a certain point that comes where if you're no longer just able to keep winning fights, you're not that snowballed hero anymore. You have to go back for it. And with only Shadowblade VKB though, like he, look at this. He's just like the Witch Doctor walk away. Like that is not a Slark. That's <laughs> that's not where you want your Slark to be. Uh, as he is now, of course, fourth in terms of the overall net worth. And Sven's still reigning in on top, so trying to keep these stacks going. Ventral Spirit going to help him out here. And now we're back. We got that Death Ward again, and this time it's going to be with the Glimmer Cape. I really don't know who can take this game at the moment. And you just look at the overall position. We're 32 minutes in. Each team has got a lot to work with. Uh, the Invoke is in a good position, the Slark's not in a bad position, yeah he's not getting snipe offs, but it's still not a, a, a like a low momentum Slark, and he got an enchant with a with a freaking Dragon Lance and Agonim Scepter. So there's so much damage which can come out from Na'Vi. Uh, the initiation is there from Na'Vi as well, and then you got LC with the same kind of thing. Nix Assassin, very successful with his movements for initiation. Uh, Jalopi's in a great position with his BKB, AC, and Blink Dagger, so there's follow up initiation from LC. Baby Knight's pumping out a large portion of damage and soon to create even more for sustain as well as having that lower cooldown through the Octarine. And the Wish Doctor's got a bloody Death Ward. The VS, yeah. the VS is kind of her thing and the Tascar is kind of his thing. But they, <laughs> they just do it. They, they save people, attack. you know. Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. They're, they're the sacrificial lambs in this game. Both teams, like, they're in a very similar position. Like, gold-wise, it's almost zero. It's the experience, which is the only real advantage for LC. I don't know if that's really, like, a huge, huge thing for him. Like, having the level 3 on Witch Doctor's ultimate, yeah. That's definitely a big thing for him. But everything else is pretty equal. Game is still anyone's. Yeah, and one thing that we haven't seen at all is really the impact of Aristyle past the early game. Like, obviously, he had amazing impact in the laning stage. Like, he completely secured the bottom lane that would have been a total disaster if he didn't have someone like the Enchantress moving in. He had great rotations to the mid, the top lane as well. But ever since then, he's been basically just split pushing on the side. He got picked off by uh, just the Nyx Assassin a couple times. Not really much you can do. And But now, with, like, Aghanim Scepter, Dragonlance, moving in towards the BKB... Is actually ready to fight and show off like the whole enchantress that we know as being one of the more powerful heroes of this patch. Oh, nice burning that mana means no shadow dance. And Dithyrondi gets blown up by Jellope. That was perfect. That was absolutely beautiful from LC. And now they've got a window of opportunity. That's a tier two tower in mid guaranteed. The question is, can they force more out of Navi? General, once again, he has so much to try and fight up against. He's got the swap, he's got the Yule Scepter, even the catch, the Zeus, like providing the Thunder God's Wrath to even stop canceling the blinks, the static field. I don't even know how you get a lasso off this game until he has a BKB. The General has a very hard life. Oh, an offering four is going to be here. Is anyone going to come back to defend that bottom lane? Yeah, here they come. Firefly has been practically expended, so the Nyx will show himself. General will have to wait another 22 seconds, but yeah, they don't force the issue. They're coming over for Roshan. Yeah, smart move. We'll Navi, see what Navi saw do. that. Yeah, the Observer will saw them go in. The Sunstrike will have to scout out. Now, what do General. they want to do? General's still looking for a kill on the bottom lane. His Firefly is four seconds off cooldown, and there goes your Yule Scepter. Defensive from the Nyx Assassin. Goes directly for the Spy Carapace. Looking for the, oh. for the swap, but uh, it comes a little... Too early, actually dodging the stun. You lose a bat rider and Roshan is also taken. Yeah, it's nice. Quick fingers on Kepka. Yeah, that was great. Like he I think General understood that last you know, last game, yeah, that was sick, but there's no way I'm getting that again versus a Zeus and everything like that. Let's get this free pick off with the Sunstrike. But Kepka, too quick. Nice little Yules, and then General's just caught out, like, completely out with his pants down. Like, nothing you could do once you blinked into that moment. Now, mm. Navi, you're gonna be on the defense of staring in the barrel of a potential, uh, Raxing by LC. With an Aegis the Immortal, this Ven's gonna have a license to kill. He did leave the Helm of the Dominator behind, so he's a little easier to kill at the moment. Easier, but he's still walking around with 46 armor. Yeah, he is, uh, general, and that's 
That is actually terrifying. <laughs> Once he pops that war cry, he is a, uh, a man to be reckoned with here. And, uh, again, similar to our style, though, we also haven't seen that power of Dendi whatsoever, really. Like, we haven't had any team. When's the last time we had, like, an actual real team fight with, like, numerous people? Have we even had one? <laughs> I don't even know we've had a five-on-five five this game since that Roshan battle. We haven't. That's, like... That's, that's it. So once Dendi actually gets into something like the Octarine core, uh, we might actually see some of those big plays come out in terms of the, all the AoE that he can actually apply onto their team. Because in the end, there is only one BKB, and it's on the Sven, yeah, who but is the, the, terrifying. The Sven's now got a Daedalus to his name, so... He's got God's Strength activated, and his Warcry activated. He's doing so much damage, he's so damn tanky. Like, he's going to get to a point where he can potentially two-hit down a Slark. That's not where you want to be as a slot. Like, that's the reason why Diddy Ryo is trying to finish up this Scardi of his. So at least he can have some more stats to help him survive. But LC's ready to come in. There's fortification available for Na'Vi, so they do have ways they can slow down the LC attack. There's the shards as well, Tornado is taking out most of the life of the creep wave. And they're keeping Jalopi a little bit too far forward. Actually, a very, very early swap. They follow with the Sun Strike, and this Ven is not a healthy man. The top lane nice also push. been forced in too far from the slot. That, that push just got like completely eradicated with what, like four spells? Yep. And it just it just shows and if Denny even wants to, he could do something kinda like if they feel way too pressured, clearly not too much yet. He can even just sell the hand of Midas for an immediate gold infusion to get up to that next big item if he really needs it for the fight too. So Navi, like, as you mentioned, they, they had this big in terms of the, the net worth, it was pretty close after the pick off that right, unfortunately, it has now dropped down to 5k in terms of the lead for LC, but it's not that much at, uh, you know, 38 minutes. It's not a big deal. The big difference is that level 16 up on the Witch Doctor and the fact that the Tusk, like, he's still sitting. Uh, he actually does a massive and all the important spells anyway, so he's just fine. There's, there's no big ultimate that they really need on, on their team. It's basically like Beaver versus General right now. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about this game. Like, imagine if. General actually gets a lasso off on top of Jellope before he gets the BKB off and he brings him over to Dendi. That's... Like, that... That's, that that can just be the game. That's keep yeah. winning right there. Especially if, uh, like, like Jellope is, uh, just at the point where he's so overconfident that he just keeps buying up items instead of having his buyback available. That's when right. Na'Vi could do... And then again, no, they can't. <laughs> they, they're, they're crap at forcing buildings. Like, unless Denny's considering picking up something like a Necro book. Like, you're not getting, yeah. the, you're not getting the, the push out from the Slark. Like right he now, kind of is an interesting it. decision. Um, he, he kind of is an interesting decision if he wants to go for, like you said, like the Necro book or the AC, if he feels like they need that push, or does he just stick with going into the Octarine core or something like that and just be so worried about team fights uh, instead. But even with those items, like, he still does provide quite a bit of damage, uh, I suppose. But you're right, like, Ditcher Raw, <laughs> not all that much. This doesn't have an impact yet. If, if he was getting pickoffs with the farm, then I would I'd be more for it. But it's when he has to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with what the Ven brings, he's nowhere near it. And that's, that's the primary problem. At least they're getting a lot off the map, Navi. Like, else they're moving from objective to objective. They want to remove this last outer tower now. Getting a lot of money in, into their accounts, but at the same time, Navi being pretty efficient across the map. So both teams are getting a little bit out of what they want to. Uh, Kefka, is he going to go? Yep, Spy Carapace, the last two is still down. That Denny wants a quick kill, and they're not going to get it. You'll set the rough, but dear Ra, he's now going to arrive. Nyx Assassin into the middle. Oh, Jelby! Invoker gets destroyed! Ven arrives at the perfect time, the stun, okay, it's just a little short of the slark. Alright, oh. this is, uh, this is mid-push time. They don't have the creep wave, however, the bottom lane's pushing in a little bit too far. So LC might be a little concerned about that, but... This Yule Scepter has just been amazing for Kefka. It has kept him alive in so many scenarios just by allowing the rest of his team to rotate in. And the fact that they blew up Dendi, like, that, that's going to help take care of that next big item. If he has the force of buyback here, which you think they would, at least the Aegis did timeout, which is pretty huge. He'll just have the cheese to rely on. have to use it at the moment. The guard star just did so much damage to him and, and held him out. Didn't even need any help from anybody else. Scardi is now done for the Slark, flying over to him. Honestly thought that with the, with the death of Dendi, there could have been a lot more damage done by LC. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're just, again, just playing it so patient. You can see the damage they do put out. If they don't actually get a big initiation inside the base, how do you deal with art style? <laughs> you don't have the ability of, like the last game we saw, the Viper just sitting on the high ground doing his thing, and there wasn't that much that LC could do. It's like, oh, can we can chrono him, we can maybe hit him with our OD, and it, it, despite that, like, yeah, OD had a Dragon Lance. Well, this is Enchantress with a Dragon Lance and an Agnum Scepter. Your Sven can't just sit up here and hit buildings. Uh, he knows. Oh, maybe the creep wave. Might have been confused by that. Uh, he'll escape anyway. He knew that Nixon was moving up because the observer wasn't centering the lane. That was when Nix went to uh, went through there with Vendetta on. Oh, Kevin really just wants that last little bit of gold. In 300 gold, he's got his Academics on the Nix Assassin. And then we're basically Brood War. Yeah, that's going to be the tool that actually gives you that opportunity for that deep range, right? Like, actually, um, every time that you see the Impetus come out there from Earthsaw, you can throw out that ridiculous Impale or Mana Burn and start burning him down from back there. So, let the Brood War begin. What, a, what an awesome Agnum's upgrade. That's probably the coolest one. I have I would not have seen that coming in the slightest. It's got to be the most unique one in the game. You'd expect it to be some kind of copyright. <laughs> <laughs> literally, it's literally Lurker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what it is. It's okay. We're fine. You know. They've been pretty chill about it so far. Yeah, we lost Wind Ranger, but what can you do? Maybe Knight's really not holding back with the Sunday Ghost Wraths. Instantly wants to know where LC is at all times. While well, the farm on the rest of his team continues. So when yeah, it's gonna... nice with that Octarine. Yeah. 67 sec cooldown. That's fine. And there's the Nyx Assassin with the Aghanim Scepter. I like how they've also Radiant's got this collection of gems. There's been four gems purchased this game. Two of them are currently sitting in the LC base. One's on General and the other's over on the Witch Doctor. Oh man, yeah, that must have been... Snake must have just purchased this one up too, so they, they keep the cooldown going as much as they can. Yeah, it was just, just purchased up for uh, Navi. Because General had just purchased one a while ago as well, but obviously he lost that too, and that's uh, <laughs> that's engagement. That's that's rough. It's, uh, again, it's how much vision and how much they put an emphasis on that, but it certainly comes at a cost when you purchase four of them at this point. What are you going to do? Like, you're still going up against the Zeus can take out all of your wards. Oh, it's okay. They bought three. My mistake. Solon bought one. Oh, here's the first. This is the first aggressive movement as a team that we've seen from Navi. I believe we've seen this from LC a few times, but it's the first time I feel like I've seen Navi actually grouped up together. They're gonna keep sunstriking Roshan. It's that time, but it's late. Uh, it looks like Iceberg wants us to have some long games tonight. Another minute, minute twenty-five. Until he's gonna be up. I'm surprised Baby Nun hasn't triggered this ulti yet. He thought about it for a moment. He actually started the clapping. Yeah, so, released. So we talked about what would happen if they were able to lasso Jellope, right? You know, and how, how game winning that is. How much Jellope is like the complete utter crux of this lineup, right? Well, no, Dendi has the solution. Go over that sheep stick, that is the perfect item. It's not the most common thing on Evokers anymore these days compared to, you know, your ACs, your Orchids, your everything else along those lines, but. This is a really great game for a Sheepstick. Just dealing with that one key target, uh, even if it means dealing with someone who can help prevent the lasso, one extra disable is going to make all the difference for Navi in both these high ground defenses, as well as obviously uh, any sort of a pickoff metric. I, I hate to tell you though, like, there's now a Satanic done over on this vent. So even if you do get the lasso with the Scythe of Vice, yes, you can have a little bit more time to attack into this vent. But you kind of need the Slark to be more powerful than what he is in order to do that. When you got the Satanic up, all he's going to do is just, like, he'll get out of the Scythe device, BKB, turn on Satanic, and then kill you. And <laughs> yes, when he does but... that, he goes back to 100% HP. This is this is the peril right now of Na'Vi, where they're going to throw in every bit of damage they've got. That Enchantress is going to have to be right on top, like, right next to Dendi, when that initiation happens. Or counter initiation happens, however it works. Oh, it's sniped. The Sunstrike did spot it this time. Move quick. They're gonna Do they have a really, smoke? Really, really quick. Like, you don't even need to trigger God's Strength here. And look where Kefka goes. Far is on the hillside, so is down the Observer Ward. Roshan's already dead. And now there's two cheeses on the side of LC. See, where'd the second cheese go? 
Uh, did he spend it? There's them on the courier. Oh no, they're stacked. He has them stacked both on uh, the venge. Okay. Like, I know they had two cheeses. <laughs> Middle lane. They just gotta have to like pass well. Oh, look at that swap range. A long jump back for Taneko. The paralyzing can't stop bouncing around, but the ventral oh, the cheese. There goes your first cheese. It's on cooldown, however, because of this stack, but they still get the kill they were searching for. And that's the Tuscar down, R style BKB. That is a long one. That was just 10 second BKB expended to ensure he could TP back to base. They may have the space just because of the pressure from Diddy Ra on the top lane. And LC's already moved back for this. General, he's he's sitting there, he's thinking about it, but Denny's a little bit too far away. They'd love to get a quick pick knowing that it's going to be a lot harder on the high ground defense, but without that uh, BKB for Digira, so he's already up here. He's going to try and pressure somebody back, but again, it's just a Slark. And, uh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that was so comical. So it's going to be... Uh, they did burn... Okay, yeah, so they did burn it. All right. No more, no more. Oh, no, they didn't burn. Okay, yeah, we're good. Just one cheese, and then we get the other one. Dice, All right, and Baby Knight is just holding on to that little Aegis there. So, moving into that high ground. It's going to be a lot of pressure on Dendi in general. Like, jeez, he hasn't even played Batrider this game, you know? He just moved around the map. For they still need to pick. Dizar is currently getting caught out. Some strikes there. They want to hold him in position, but they oh! be! The big double's done! The help arrived from the Thunder God. Throwing uh, out that wrath, and then all of a sudden, the Bat Rider as well as Slark it down. Both have buybacks, but it's a five man group up in mid. General's already bought back. He doesn't have Firefly available, so there's not a lot he can really do to Soul this up apart from throwing out a Flame Break. Yeah, they can start a jewelry shop up in the Dark Fountain. They left a gem there. <laughs> the Bat Rider dropped one, but they just left it. Another quick oh, jump. Nice play. That's not going to connect. Now you see the power of Art Style. Look for that bonus damage. As this Ven does take a hell of a lot of it, and Diddy Ra is going to BKB. BKB. They try and go in for this one. The Death Ward, however, is going to spill out a lot of physical damage. But then the dump from Taneko cancels that one off. Are they going to get through the rest of it? Yep, they do. They actually get through this Ven. Then he keeps moving forward. The side of the fire is being used to keep the Zeus out of the play, so he can't just spam out whatever he's got. They've gone through three players here of LC. Diddy Ra moving over. He's got so much essence shifted, and now he's going to use all to kill off Baby Knight. Unless they go for more, in fact, he leaves Baby Knight alone. They burn the Aegis of the Immortal. It's only 12 vessels, I thought he had a lot more than that, but now Baby Knight's under God's wrath. The stun is there. Six Assassin trying to help out as much as he possibly can inside that Aegis, wow. except the Baby Knight just manning up. The snowball will protect him for a moment. Kefka, who's he want to go on? He mana burns over towards the Slark, blinks with a stun, and the Slark will go down. 105 seconds on the sideline. Denny's down for 70, but he's got buyback available. Radiance middle tower and LC, just the, just Radiance the standing combo of Kefka as well as uh, Baby Knight. He managed to turn that fight around. I mean, they just 2v5 them. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Essentially. I, I, I can't in a position where, where Kefka could have got himself a four-man stun, so... It's true. That was... That's great. I can't believe we have a Zeus and a Nyx Assassin currently taking buildings. What is happening this game? And Jellipy, like, this is that whole threat we talked about, though, is that he blinked in for that initiation, he missed it. I mean, the general got to live, and then he got punished. He didn't BKB during the EMP, and after that, like, what are you going to do in the fight? You don't have any mana. He was forced to retreat. Oh, nice swap. Arstal's going to use the BKB, but obviously, oh, uh, VS has killed himself by doing this. Arstal, he doesn't have enough mana. He can't impedit anymore. And then Nick's assassin, he hides in the spy carapace. Tom turns up killing himself, too. That's an enchantress buyback. The mid ranks is down. There's still five seconds until Dendi is up. But LC will take out the mid racks. They've still got Satanic available as well as God Strength, so yep, they're not going to back out. Death Wolves back off cooldown. Now the Blink Lasso. General finds the opening, but the Paralyzing Cast is going to turn that around. Dendi into the BKB, but the Death Ward. The Death Ward did everything. Dendi just all. <laughs> thing he can do except die. The sun's available, the thunderbolt can be thrown out. This is practically GG at this point. When you're losing two lanes of Raxus, that can't afford to lose Dendi, but he just fought back. The only thing which is going to save Na'Vi, their, well, their base, is the fact that tier two towers still up on the top lane. You could just go for, you could go for the tier fours, you could go for the GG push here. Uh, I think you do. 
Oh, what a great Fiva just holding that BKB for so long. <laughs> Popping it at the perfect moment. New Riles give another crack at this. Nice tornado with the EMP follow up. Burns off a decent amount of manner, manner of this Vamper. Zeus doesn't care. He's got so much to spare anyway. But the tier 4 towns are almost gone. Tuska up in 5. What do they got coming in the courier? It's just a hyperstone for art style. Oh, okay. And then he's he stuns on. up. That's it. That could be it. The snowball protection. No Denny's down. They've lost too much damage. The Tusker won't be able to retreat out properly. They've lost too many heroes. The fortress is gone. And GGLC will be now the team to be undefeated in the Dota pit. The second group of Europe. And Navi. Not only did they lose one game, they lose their entire series. They're still in a very commanding position in the grid. They're still in a very commanding position in the grid.